A passport. Most likely nothing more than an official travel document to you and me. Want to cross a border? Don't forget your passport. Want to fly to a different country? Don't forget your passport. Now, imagine a fugitive wanting to cross a border or take a flight. The minute they'll show their passport is probably the same minute they'll get arrested. Does this mean that a criminal can never move? No. All they need is the expertise of the following man. He may look like an outstanding citizen, but in all reality, he ran a ring supplying forged passports to some of the biggest criminals out there. But how did he do it? This is the story of Anthony Beard. If you look at this man, you might think of him being a very regular, law-abiding older man, perhaps reminding you of your grandfather even. However, looks can be deceiving, as this 61-year-old has a deep history of crime and violence. Being born in Sydenham, South London, where crime rates are only ever rising, Anthony wasn't exactly born with a silver spoon in his mouth. And while not much is known about his childhood, one can only assume that he didn't have a particular affection for the judicial system. Why? Well, for at least 20 years of his life, Anthony had been engaged in an extremely lucrative hustle, arranging forged passports for criminals. Now, you're probably aware of criminals using fake passports to be able to cross borders without being arrested. Usually, these passports are counterfeit, made to look like real passports. But Anthony's passports were different. He found an ingenious way to arrange that the UK government itself would issue a new passport, providing his client with a completely new identity, as this passport would be issued by the HM Passport Office. It was extremely hard to notice that it was essentially a forged passport. This made these fraudulently obtained genuine passports, or FOGs as what they call them, a true golden ticket for these high-profile criminals. But how was he able to get these passports? The key was to find people who could lend their identity, essentially becoming the identity donor. It was important to find someone that would not be wanting to leave the country and therefore didn't need a passport. This individual would need to cooperate and consequently know that their identity would be used by someone else. And when this individual had an expired passport, it was the perfect candidate. But who would willingly agree to basically giving their identity away? Well, Anthony knew exactly where he could find these people. He would go to rehab centers and veterans shelters, searching for individuals who were easy to convince. Often these people had drug and alcohol problems. He then persuaded them to give him their personal information and everything he needed to arrange a new passport and offered them a small fee. He would then apply to renew this person's passport, updating it with the name and photo of the person he was forging for. If necessary, he would even phone up the passport office, pretending to be someone else to check the status of the application. Let's listen to a recorded call. Good afternoon, thank you for calling our IG's passport office. I want to check the progress of my uh, passport. This is Beard chasing up some passport applications. In each call, he pretends to be a different person. It's Christopher Lloyd. David John Caldell. By using the passport renewal process, he avoided the required in-person interview, which would obviously be impossible for a criminal hiding out in another country. A seemingly legal passport for a wanted criminal is worth its weight in gold, and it's safe to say that Anthony's business was extremely lucrative. And as his underground side hustle picked up traction, he started to draw the attention of higher profile gangsters, one of whom was a guy named Christopher Zitek, formerly known as Christopher McCormack. At 67 years old, Christopher doesn't look like your everyday underground boss, but also in this case, looks can be deceiving. He had been part of the North London gang called the Adams Family, also known as the Clerkenwell Crime Syndicate since the 90s. Be sure to check out my video about them too. As part of this notorious gang, Christopher engaged in unspeakable acts, which we cannot explain to you without breaking this platform's policy. To give you an idea, in the 90s, he stood trial for alleged torture, where by the end, let's just say the man's face was unrecognizable. And although he had the victim's blood on his clothing, he was eventually acquitted in court. Christopher had a serious reputation amongst gangsters internationally and was seen as the guy you call if you needed to get out of a bad spot. So, when he met Anthony sometime in the early 2000s, it was a match made in heaven. Christopher had the clients who were in need of fake passports, essentially becoming the broker, and Anthony had the ability to forge passports. Then there was a 72-year-old man named Alan Thompson, 
who was more of an aide to the business and Christopher's right-hand man. Whenever Christopher needed a lift or other small tasks done, Alan was the guy. And so, from 2000 on, these three men engaged in a lucrative criminal business, supplying passports to gangsters on the run who were willing to pay a lot of money for a new identity. Over the next 20 years or so, it is suspected that Anthony supplied around 108 of these fraudulently obtained genuine passports. Each one cost around 15 to 20,000 pounds, so at worst, these guys made over 1,600,000 together. And then, considering that the identity donors, the people whose passports were being used, received no more than 100 pounds, it was definitely a profitable business. But if this business was seemingly so bulletproof, how did they uncover it all? Well, here comes the NCA. If you've watched some of our other videos before, you've probably heard me mention the National Crime Agency, or NCA. This is a law enforcement organization based in the UK that tackles high-level crimes and organized crime groups. You can think of them as the British equivalent of the FBI. Anyway, in 2017, the NCA started a joint investigation named Operation Stray with the Dutch National Police, Police Scotland, and the HM Passport Office. This all arose after the Dutch police detected an issue with British expat criminals, who they believed were presenting false identities to them. After notifying the British police, a joint investigation team was formed, which essentially allowed these law enforcement agencies from different countries to work together. To try and catch the problem at its source, a bunch of British officers were sent to the Netherlands to be trained with fingerprint identification machines. After receiving this training, they were deployed at Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam, where they attempted to catch criminals using these fraudulent passports. On top of this, the NCA and Dutch police kept in close contact, and eventually, they started to connect a few dots about the origin of the surplus of fraudulent passports. In fact, it quickly became obvious that this wasn't just a small operation. No, they were dealing with something a whole lot bigger. With this in mind, the team started to analyze passport applications in Britain, and they struck gold pretty quickly. The passport office found an application that they believed to be fraudulent, and so using CCTV, they traced who made the application, and who did they find at the end of the trail? Anthony Beard. And so ensued a period of plain genius tactics to find out how Anthony operated. Primarily, the NCA started to analyze the phone numbers that featured on the renewal application of each suspected FOG. Essentially, the NCA found a voice sample of Beard through an old police interview, and then used this to analyze different phone calls that were associated with the suspicious passports. Luckily, the passport office records each phone call that they receive, mainly for training purposes, this enabled the NCA to repurpose these recordings to find numerous links to Anthony and the fraudulent passports. Now, this was by no means an easy task because he used two different burner phones for every single application. Nevertheless, as the team persevered through the mountain of data, they quickly realized that they were dealing with something much bigger than they first anticipated. Why? Well, he was still under surveillance. The NCA saw Anthony travel to Christopher's address and they were fairly familiar with Christopher's criminal history. This affiliation kind of suggested that the whole ordeal was a multi-layered operation, rather than Anthony acting as a lone wolf and making a few thousand pounds here and there. Now, because the meetings between Anthony and Christopher were held exclusively in his home, the authorities found it extremely difficult to gather any meaningful information from these meetings. Faced with these less than ideal circumstances, they deployed their extensive technological resources, bugging Christopher's house with audio recording devices. Over months and months of constant surveillance, the NCA became increasingly confident of Christopher's involvement in the FOG business. These suspicions were then confirmed beyond doubt when DNA analysis revealed that his fingerprint was present on a fraudulent Latvian passport made for fugitive criminal Scotty Hughes. With their suspicions confirmed, the NCA employed a low-key strategy, allowing the passport office to approve suspicious passport applications which they identified by using handwritten analysis as well as voice recognition specialists. Once the application was approved, an undercover police officer was sent to deliver it to the named address to confirm that the identity donor was complicit. They then tracked the movement of the passport, which, as you probably can guess, went straight to Anthony. With the help of Dutch authorities, the passports were more often than not recovered down the line. After three long, hard years of compiling evidence against Anthony and Christopher, the NCA felt confident that they had enough proof to arrest the pair. Christopher was residing in Spain at that time, but made an unexpected return back to UK soil, giving the NCA the perfect chance to arrest him. And so, they did. The whole operation took the coordination of 327 officers. 
But in October 2021, Anthony, Christopher, and five other members of the operation were arrested. In court, Christopher, Anthony, and their associates stood little chance. The NCA had three years of evidence against the group, including over 200 witness statements and about 1,000 exhibits of their booming business. The group faced charges of conspiracy to pervert the course of justice, conspiracy to make false instruments, as well as money laundering. And knowing that the odds were stacked against him, Anthony pleaded guilty on the first day of the trial, which took place on January the 3rd, 2023. In his plea, he admitted supplying 70 fraudulent passports used by high-profile criminals like Christy Kinahan, as well as several other members of Glasgow-based gang Gillespie, including Christopher Hughes and Jordan Owens. Christopher and his right-hand man Alan didn't break so easily, but were eventually found guilty on the 17th of March. Christopher was seen as the brains of the operation, and when the sentences were handed down on the 16th of May, he received the longest jail time of eight years. Anthony was given six, and Alan three. However, the Court of Appeal felt that at first instance, the judge had been far too lenient. And so, on the 25th of August, Anthony's sentence was increased to 10 years and two months, and Christopher's bumped up to 12 years. I hope you found this video entertaining, and if you did, please consider leaving a like and letting us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. I'll see you in the next one.